Hello and welcome to this session. In this session we will solve trigonometric equations using inverse trigonometric functions with the help of technology or we can say with the help of modeling. Now Sometimes value of a trigonometric function is known and it is necessary to find the measure of an angle. The concept of inverse functions can be applied to find the inverse of trigonometric functions. For example, we have sin x is equal to root 3 by 2. Now here we have to find x. Now, by definition of inverse trigonometric functions, y is equal to sine of x if and only if x is equal to sine inverse of y and minus pi by 2 is less than equal to x is less than equal to pi by 2 this means x varies from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Now, sin of x is equal to root 3 by 2 if and only if x is equal to sin inverse of root 3 by 2 and this implies x is equal to now sin inverse of root 3 by 2 is equal to pi by 3. So the required angle is pi by 3. Now here we know at which angle sin is root 3 by 2 from the table of trigonometric functions. Now here sin 60 degrees is root 3 by 2 that means sin pi by 3 is root 3 by 2. So, from this table, we can easily find the solution, but this is not always the case. For example, if we have to solve the equation sin x is equal to 0 0.5738 for x, now, we do not know the angle where sine is 0.5738. Now to solve this, we make use of scientific calculator. Now on the scientific calculator, we type A sine 0.5738. And enter and here we get 35.0156 degrees where A sine means we are finding sine inverse. Now sine x is equal to 0 0.5738 implies x is equal to sine inverse of 0 0.5738 and from scientific calculator we have got the value of a sine of 0 0.5738 that is we have got the value of sine inverse of 0 0.5738 which is equal to 35.0156 degrees so, x is approximately equal to 35 degrees. Now, let us discuss another example. Here we have to solve the equation 3 cos theta plus 2 is equal to 3 for 0 degree is less than equal to theta is less than equal to 180 degrees. That means theta varies from 0 degree to 180 degrees. First of all, let us simplify this equation. Now 3 cos theta 
प्लस टू इज इक्वल टू थ्री इम्प्लाइज थ्री कॉस थीटा इज इक्वल टू थ्री माइनस टू दैट इज इक्वल टू वन एंड दिस गिव्स कॉस थीटा इज इक्वल टू वन अपॉन थ्री एंड फर्दर दिस इम्प्लाइज थीटा इज इक्वल टू कॉस इन वर्स ऑफ वन अपॉन थ्री एंड नाउ वी विल यूज साइंटिफिक कैलकुलेटर to find the value of theta for this we will type a cos of 1 upon 3 and enter and we get this equal to 17.52 degrees therefore theta is equal to cos inverse 1 upon 3 Now here, from scientific calculator, we have got the value of cos inverse of one upon three, which is equal to seventeen point five two degrees. So theta is approximately equal to seventeen point five degrees, and this value of theta lies. In the interval zero, that is zero degree, is less than equal to theta, is less than equal to 180 degrees, and this is the only value of theta such that cos theta is equal to one upon three. And now let us discuss modeling of trigonometric equations. Now suppose. Two physics students set up an experiment with a spring. In their experiment, the weighted ground was pulled downwards six inches from the rest position. It rose six inches above rest position and returned to six inches below rest position once in every six seconds. The equation h is equal to minus six. Cos of pi by 3 into t accurately models height above and below rest position in every six seconds. Find when the weighted ball first will be at a height of three inches and four inches above rest position. Now it is a periodic function given by. H is equal to minus six cos of pi by three into t. Now we have to find t when h is equal to three inches. For this, we make use of inverse trigonometric functions. Let this be equation number one. So put h is equal to Three in equation number one, and we have three is equal to minus six cos of pi by three into t, and this implies three upon minus six is equal to cos of pi by three into t, which further gives minus one upon two is equal to cos. Of pi by three into t. Now, by the definition of inverse trigonometric functions, this implies cos inverse of minus one by two is equal to pi by three into t. Now, on cross multiplication, this implies t is equal to Three upon pi into cos inverse of minus one by two. Further, this implies t is equal to three upon pi. Now, from scientific calculator, we can find cos inverse of minus one by two, and this is equal to two pi upon three. This means cos inverse of minus one by two. Is equal to two pi upon three, that is one twenty degrees.
Although this implies, now here, 3 into 1 is 3, and pi will be cancelled with pi. So t is equal to 2. So, for h is equal to 3, we are getting t is equal to 2. This means, in 2 seconds, it will reach at the height of 3 inches. And now we have to find t when h is equal to 4 inches. Now this is the equation 1. So, putting h is equal to 4 in equation 1, we get 4 is equal to minus 6 into cos of pi by 3 into t and this implies 4 upon minus 6 is equal to cos of pi by 3 into t and this gives minus 2 upon 3 is equal to cos of pi by 3 into t. Now, by definition of inverse trigonometric functions, here we have cos inverse of minus 2 by 3 is equal to pi by 3 into t. Further, now here we will cross multiply and we have t is equal to 3 upon pi into cos inverse of minus 2 upon 3. Now, by using scientific calculator, we have cos inverse of minus 2 by 3 is equal to 131.810 degrees, which is equal to 132 degrees, approximately Now we convert degrees into radians by multiplying 132 degrees by pi upon 180 degrees. Now 12 into 11 is 132 and 12 into 15 is 180. So this is equal to 11 pi by 15 radians. So 132 degrees is equal to 11 pi by 15 radians. So cos inverse of minus 2 by 3 is approximately equal to 11 pi by 15 radians. Putting this value here, this implies T is approximately equal to 3 upon pi into 11 pi by 15 the whole. Now 3 into 5 is 15 and pi will be cancelled with pi. So this implies T is approximately equal to 11 by 5. Therefore T is approximately equal to 2.2 seconds. So this means in 2.2 seconds approximately it will reach at a height of 4 inches. So in this session we have learned how to solve trigonometric equations using inverse trigonometric functions with the help of modeling. And this completes our session. Hope you all have enjoyed the session.